Hello and welcome to the Arena Sports Show. My name is Claire Grayson Fanza. Well, they say life begins at 40 and the last 39 years have been only research, of course, to prepare you for what is to come. So basically, it's not FP1 nor FP3, but it's FP39. That is, of course, practice sessions 39 to ensure that you flourish in your 40s. And while my panel is doing exactly just that, they are a living testament to that theory. I've got sports journalist Matlatin Patlele, who, if you follow him on the social media streets, you do you know that, of course, he is only influencing one brand. And while he's managed to live life without, of course, internet, so that means that he's grown, of course, a thick skin in terms of uh, taking those jabs that he gets on Twitter, what we now call X. So he's got that covered. And then, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Mr. Click Click. Bang. is finally back after making his national debut and of course uh, national TV which I'm absolutely happy about to have him back on the show after he decided that he's going to ditch us because at his age he needs a bit more time to, to recover and to prepare for such things. Cesar Mabena is with us as well. Gentlemen, so good having you guys. How are you guys doing? Oh, wow. Really? <laughs> wow. The only way to respond is wow. <laughs> so I can't do too many matches in one week now, but I'm still because of my age. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's a bit tough for you. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> but good to have you back, Mabena. <laughs> we have a jam pack show for you today. And well, as you know, we have our usual features where we find out what's been happening on your headlines and, of course, our stars of the week. On that note, let's find out what's happening on your headlines. Former Super Sports United, Kaiser Chiefs and South African Junior International, Luke Fleurs was fondly remembered during an emotional memorial service at FNB Stadium on Thursday. Fleurs died after he was shot during a hijacking incident in Johannesburg and the South African Police Service have since arrested six suspects on Wednesday morning in Slowville, Soweto in connection with his murder. It was heartbreaking. Um, in that moment, I messaged a few friends that obviously knew Luke and I just like asked them, is this really happening? Is it possible that Luke can leave us at this day and age now, at this moment? Uh, so it was just, it came as a surprise uh, to all of us. But I mean, God has his reasons as to why Luke is no more with us. Uh, but yeah. At first it was just that he was shot. And you know, in my mind already, I was, I, was, I was starting to think of the stories that he was going to tell, you know, about everything that happened. And then 10 minutes later, I got a message to say he didn't make it. And my heart just dropped, you know. And immediately started, you know, playing all the, the stories, all the moments that I shared with him, you know, and couldn't sleep that night. Just constantly him on my mind, all the memories, the times we shared together, you know, on and off the field. Listening to, you know, the memorial and the, the good things that have been said about his impact in the change room is not surprising. So you can imagine that even though he didn't play any game officially for Kaiser Chiefs, but he'll be sorely missed for the person he was, you know, and you can imagine now with the kind of personality he was, if he had opportunities to come onto the field, how much of an impact and contribution he could have made, you know, to take his achieves forward. So, yeah, it's really, really sad that uh, 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 he's passed on without playing a single official game for Kaiser Chiefs. My sincere condolences to the, the Fleers family and immediate family and friends, and also very importantly to the Kaiser Chiefs family. The family have been uh, amazing in terms of support and comfort for the Fleers family during their time of mourning and we thank them for that and at the same time we're cognizant of the fact that they too are in mourning and we respect that and wish them strength during these difficult times. We felt that it was very important for us to, to provide a, an environment and a platform for us to honour him. You know, he spent six years here of his life uh, and his family has you know, travelled up for this, this, this terrible tragedy. Uh, the funeral ha having been, been, been placed on the 20th of April, we felt that it was good for us to, to come down to the place also where you know, he was hoping and dreaming to play, uh, hoping and dreaming to make his debut here at FNB, his home ground. Um, uh, and so this memorial service, I think, was just for everyone to connect and just to remember and to just share some moments. And I think it was uh, an amazing, amazing afternoon.
be able to hear some of the stories and how Lucas touched other people, uh, not just in a footballing perspective, because in, you know, just as a pure human being, it was great to hear um, the kind of person that he was, uh, what he stood for, uh, how he's just himself. Uh, and uh, it was great for us to, to, to share this moment at the stadium. I know a place where he would have you know, wanted to be. Wow. We are, this is very overwhelming for us. You know, um, everything that is happening, you know, now at this time, it's, it's so unbelievable, it's so unreal, you know. Um, I never thought it was going to happen to us, you know. Um, but it happened and um, it's tough to handle, you know. Um, I went to go see him while he was like, uh, to go and identify him, you know. And he was, it was like, he was smiling at me, you know, like telling me like, Daddy, um, I'm okay, man, you know, you don't need to worry. You know, that made me feel great, you know. It's a lot of things that is making us, um, that comforts us, you know, um, all the love that we, and the, um, the love and the condolences that we are getting from, from everywhere, the Amakosi fans, you know, um, people abroad, you know, everywhere up in Africa, Safa president, Kafka, it's just, it's just amazing, you know, all the soccer fraternities up in Africa. It's just amazing how many hearts that our, our, our son touched, you know, for being the person that he is, you know. And that makes us feel as he is so much loved by our mighty God, you know, and that gives us comfort, you know, to know that... Um, He's safe where he is and he's happy where he is, you know, and um, yeah. Thursday marked 23 years since the Ellis Park Stadium disaster where 43 football fans lost their lives due to a stampede while attending the Soweto Derby between Orlando Pirates and Kaiser Chiefs. In what remains one of the saddest days for South African football, supporters were trampled to death and many others injured in a stampede that was triggered by huge crowds at a league match between the traditional rivals, Pirates and Chiefs. Protest women will be looking to take the lead in the second of three ODIs against Sri Lanka and Kimberley on Saturday. The first match in East London on Tuesday night, where opening batter Tasman Britt scored a brilliant century, was declared a no result because of persistent rain. After the disappointment of Banyana Banyana, who failed to qualify for the Olympic Games this week, attention turns to the Netbank Cup this weekend with teams battling it out to book spots in the semi-final. Action starts on Friday with the Twani Derby, where University of Pretoria hosts Mamelodi Sundowns and moves to Saturday with Super Sport United visiting Stellenbosch, Amazulu hosting Orlando Pirates and TS Galaxy at home to Chipper United on Sunday. Well, a lot has been happening in the world of sports. And of course, the most unfortunate one is Banyana Banyana, who are not able to qualify for the Olympics. But we're still very proud of the ladies and, of course, and the fight that they've put through. But Sizu Mabena, great to have you back. Mm -hmm. And when we move over, of course, to that star of the week, that's where we start with you because you've been gone for a while. So who has impressed you in the last couple of days? Um, I, I told him a few weeks ago. I'll choose him again. He's got a hat trick for Orlando Paris, Mabasa. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's doing... Uh, He's having a great run um, in, uh, in recent times. And a 7-1 win, mm -hmm. um, but a hat-trick again. We don't see very many hat-tricks in yeah. our local game at the top flight. So mm. uh, for the hat-trick, I have to give him my play of the week. I guess that's why you're wearing all black, Sizo wow. Mabena. I, I, I see what you're doing. The <laughs> don't stop coming today. No? <laughs> stop staying away, and then we'll be all good again. <laughs> we move over. Matlatsin Patiela, who's your star of the week? Yeah, I'm going a bit different. Uh -huh. uh, I hope you guys will allow me. Uh, I will go with Morocco Solos. I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm because they are considering not playing their, ma their next match against Sundowns, so that Sundowns have a longer time uh, of preparing for the Champions League semi-final against the, you know, the Champions League semi-final. So I think that's a nice touch. Um, mm -hmm. It's still to be approved by the PSL, but I think it's a good thing. Uh, Sundowns need support when they go to the Champions League. Oh, that's actually sweet of them. At least for once, we're not crying about Did Solis. we discuss that as well? We've seen 
Uh, other leagues do it, yeah. like yeah. Egypt and Morocco, where they give their teams I mean, um, time off to focus on the Champions In the quarterfinals, San Lanz was yeah. the only team that played midweek. Yeah. 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 The rest of the team had a week off. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. Pick up, yeah, pick up Swallows then. Pick up to Swallows. Absolutely love to see it. And then when I then get to my Star of the Week, you don't have to ask me, Mrs. Mwabena, you're too late. It's <laughs> fine. I'll, I'll tell you guys how my Star of the Week is. Um, it has to be uh, Real Madrid midfielder in Tony Cruz. I think he's absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I was listening to an interview, um, I think two years ago, from Pep Guardiola and he was just alluding to how competitive Tony is and he's just you know that quiet calm player but he does the work for you and he mm -hmm. shows up and I guess when you liken him to someone here in South Africa it, you'd have to bring in him Shishi quiet player but he will he will dance and make sure that the team is ticking so I think for me Tony to be consistent at his level at his age, age. absolutely phenomenal so my star of the week has to go to Tony and then we move on ladies and gentlemen of course to as the show continues the Bulls are also of course in action as they prepare uh, they've had a bit of uh, logistics hiccups now again in terms of traveling getting to London um, so let's quickly find out what uh, Jake White had to say in terms of those logistics You know, it's nice energy. We've got, uh, as I said to you last week, the one thing we, we've been talking a lot about is we want to improve every single year. Last year we lost it to lose in the top 16 game. This year we managed to host the top 16 game and get through to the next round of quarterfinals. Um, and so, I mean, it's, you know, for this group, if you consider that three years we're playing this competition and uh, every year we've improved, improved. Um, and I'm talking about URC and two years in the Champions Cup. Um, you know, to go in your year two, get into a quarterfinals top eight clubs in, in, in Europe or in this competition is obviously, you know, it's something we're proud of. And uh, as I said, there's some guys going on Emirates, some guys going on Qatar, some guys going on British Airways, some guys going on Virgin, some guys going on Swiss Air, some guys going on Lufthansa. And the idea is that we get there tomorrow and obviously logistically we've got to make sure everyone gets fetched and carried and shuttles and, and then we'll arrive in, in Northampton tomorrow, hopefully by, by lunchtime, everyone should be in the hotel. And then, we, you know, then we're going to get ready and prep Thursday as a, with a training session. And then, and as I said, difficulty comes back when we come back because everyone has to then go back to you know, different, different um different, uh, I wouldn't say airports, but different journeys on the way home as well. Some via, as I said, Doha, some via Dubai, some via Frankfurt. So it's not ideal, I mean, but we'll get there, we'll get there. I mean, I'm, I'm saying that I'm totally confident as this competition, you know, grows and as people understand it, we'll get there. Well, of course, to find out the thoughts then of Matlati Patele in terms of the Bulls, it's interesting, Matlati. Last week, we were commending Mamelodi Sundowns in terms of logistics, where they had to do what they had to do to make sure the players get in time. Today is in the rugby space and mm. logistics, a bit of a headache still. Yeah, it's a bit of a headache. Uh, I guess it's off nobody's doing. Yeah. Um, because, you know, the organizers didn't know if the Bulls were going to travel or not. And they cited the fact that having to blog, book, uh, seats um, in, a, in, in a direct flight from Johannesburg to, to London was going to be too expensive. Um, mm -hmm. And by the time the Bulls were confirmed that they'll be traveling, the seats were taken. So I think a team of about 30 Bulls players left in eight different flights mm -hmm. to you know, different destinations around Europe um, to get to Northampton. They're playing on Saturday um, in the Champions Cup um, quarterfinal. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit of a nightmare, but I'm sure they'll be able to sort it out and they'll get there. Uh, they'll have two days of preparation and you know, get, be ready for the match. 100%. And on that note, we move over to football. We do know that the Cup of Dreams is back this weekend, that Netbank Cup. And of course, we are joined by a very special guest in just a bit who will get to, of course, unpack the quarterfinals with us. But on that note, let's find out what the coaches have to say ahead of preparations. For us, more than anything is to assess ourselves against the uh, great players uh, of Mamelodi Sundowns and also learn uh, a lot from that uh, exercise. We, we go in there, we are prepared obviously to uh, play the match, to compete on the day. Uh, there's no pressure uh, uh, altogether to, on our players. They know that, we've told them that, look, 
uh, it's a big opportunity to play against uh, those players. Yeah, uh, we play against Chipper. When we see the last nine games of them, they won five, draw two and lost two, scored 13 goals, ball possession average every game around 46 percent. So it means it's a team that is well, well coached and it will be a very tough opponent. Yes, we are playing at home. Yes, we know about our strengths, but uh, we also know that we have to be on our best to increase our chance, of course, to win the, the games. And, and it will be a, a, a tough one. And hopefully we can be the team that can get to the next round. Thank you. Try and get a good get a team out there. Um, Obviously, conditions will play a big part, you know. Um, so hopefully, you'll get a calmer day than it's been there the last couple of days. So, um, and then obviously, you, you, you know, your, your, your tactical approach will change according to the conditions, those type of things. So we'll see, you know. Um, it is a rugby pitch, so it is always difficult to play there. So we might have to, you know. Um, but we'll see. You know, you can always, we'll, have a, we'll have a couple of ways of trying to do things before we get there. Yeah. Uh, same thoughts that, that I tried to express after the draw. It's going to be a complicated one at that stage of the competition. Each and every team wants to, to do their best to, to find, in our case, to find ourselves in the, in the last matches one more time. Uh, Amazulu is a... Uh, is a team that we, we do respect a lot. Experienced players, players that prove uh, already many times that uh, they are excellent players with a good level, competitive uh, and away game. There's all the conditions to understand that it's not gonna be a, a walk in the park for us, uh, but at the same time, uh, we comfortable in those scenarios. We we used to show our our best version in in that kind of games, that type of game. So we have one week to prepare the game. We are in a in a good space and really looking for uh, for the kickoff to to try to play our football one more time. We have to go game by game and try to establish ourselves in every competition and put ourselves in the next round of every competition. And we've done that very well at the moment. And so um, we've got to just continue with a laser focus and with a lot of humility and, and, uh, and also minimize our, our, our hearing of the noise. You know, there's a lot of noise, but um, if we just stay focused on, on, on the task at hand, we should be fine. And well now, this is the part where we bring in a man who's absolutely phenomenal. Not only, of course, was he great in the field of play, but also life after football. He's managed to play for Kaiser Chiefs and Orlando Pirates. I guess you've got a clue now who I'm talking about. Not a lot of players have achieved this great feat. Also played for Bitvis Viz and, of course, Super Sports United. Stiga is what we call him. It's Danton Fredericks. NetBank Ambassador Stiga, thank you for joining us. I mean, 11 years after retiring from football, we oh. see you at Anfield. Life is good for you lately, I assume. Yo, time flies. 11 years, you give me my age away. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, um, yeah, time flies, but I'm just so blessed that um, the, my career could span at least, I think, 16 or 17 years. Mm. Um, it's not every footballer that has that privilege. Um, but uh, just just blessed to have travelled that journey and uh, here we are. Definitely. And lately you were at Anfield. How was that watching Liverpool? Cesar Mabena was not happy about that trip, but how was it for you? Even me. <laughs> oh, and my dad's not happy. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, um, I'm, I'm a big Liverpool supporter, so it was like a, a dream come true. Mm. Um, and it was a little bit bittersweet. I was chatting to Julia and she says, were you in tears when they sang the anthem? Yeah. Uh, Julia Stewart, that mm. she's based in London. So I told her, I said, you know what, it was a, it was a little bit bittersweet because um, very few people know that I was 
this close to signing for West Ham and this close to playing in the English Prem when I was at Kaiser Chiefs. Yeah. Um, flew to London in the hotel, next day going to do a medical and then had to leave the hotel because teams never agreed on, on, on that. So, so that moment, experiencing that English football, mm. um, knowing mm. that you were so close, it, it was bittersweet, um, but um, it's life and it's football. I still managed to play in Europe and uh, like I say, I remain blessed. What about Jurgen Klopp now, announcing that he's leaving? How are you oh, feeling? Because oh I'm not a Liverpool fan, but I was devastated Oof. when I heard the news. Yeah, the conversation is going south now, man. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to cry now, and you can, No, and you can just see, and you could see what he means yeah. to everybody, to the fans. Like, um, even rivals, like um, chatting to Benny McCarthy after the Man U game. Mm -hmm. um, the plaudits he has for, for Klopp, because... I think what, what you take away from Klopp is that he's a good human being mm -hmm. and he mixes that with man management um, and that, that uh, just uh, brings a success to the team. I like that you mentioned good human being because now when we bring it back to the Nedbank Cup, of course, we've got the quarterfinals that are upon us. And, and we'll start with the defending champions, that being Orlando Pirates. Um, they are in action against Amazulu this weekend. And when you look into what Jose Rivera said, a lot of his players go on to say that he's a good human being. And you look at the mm -hmm. improvement from the players. Yes, there are changes in terms of the starting lineup, which is a conversation we'll get into. But looking into Pirates, do you think they'll be able to defend it? Because at this point, that's what they're trying to do. Will they be able to defend it? I'm not sure. Um, they'll definitely feel that they can. Mm -hmm. um, they've, uh, I think since Jose Rivero is at Orlando Pirates, you can say, <coughs> it's, it's a long time since you can say Pirates has a coach. Mm. You know, they mm -hmm. have a coach. Um, they have an identity. Um, they have depth. I just feel that there's something missing, um, especially when they take the lead. That, that element of managing the game. Mm -hmm. Now they come up against a very... Uh, difficult opponent in mm. Amazulu. Yeah. I think Coach Franco has managed to, to make this Amazulu side defensively solid, Matlats. And uh, they don't concede easily. It's uh, quarterfinals of a cup, so they'll be giving it their all. And uh, Orlando Pirates have two suspensions in Kofi and CBC. So mm. that's going to make for interesting, interesting, um, uh, interesting game. What, what do you make of Pirates' this, uh, first half of the season where uh, the feeling was at times they play well, but they just don't have that finishing touch or that permanent goal scorer. And now second half of the season, they've mm. made the decision to bring Mobasa back. He seems to be finding his goal scoring form. Not actually finding it, he's had it since the Kosafa Cup, Swallows, it's getting better at, uh, at Paris. Does that give him something extra, um, especially at this time of the season with the Netbank Cup and the season coming to an end as well? Yeah, I think in terms of goals, um, Evidence Mahop has come to the party. Mm -hmm. Had a solid uh, Nations Cup, um, unfortunately injured now. Yeah. Mabasa stepped up. So there is a, a central figure, a point of reference for Orlando Pirates. So that will always um, put them in the running. Um, I've, I feel that they they favourites to end second. Um, they will always be a favourite in, in the Cup. And uh, I think they'll give themselves an opportunity because of this situation. You have midfielders that can score, mm -hmm. but you need a top man to give you double digits. Yeah. Now, if Mabasa together with Mahopa can give you the double digits, then mm -hmm. you've done the job in that, in mm -hmm. that regard. Yeah, Steve, I think one thing I've noticed about, I mean, obviously we intact a lot with the coach and press conference and stuff. And um, I fully agree with you that he's a very good coach. And you can see that by the way he has improved some of these players. Um, you know, you talk about uh, uh, Mahopa. I mean, when he arrived at the club, he was, mm. you know, uh, you could see that there's something there, but he had more work and, and, and many others. Mm. For me, the one thing that I've noticed about him is that, I, I mean, I don't know if you, you've seen it, but he comes across as a little bit too soft. Mm. Uh, I mean, obviously, we don't know <laughs> how he deals with the guys on yeah. the training and behind the scenes, but. Mm. Um, uh, and I'm, I'm not in any way implying that uh, yeah. you know, the players do as they wish at Pirates, but mm. I, I think it's, it's, it's a little bit too soft. Do you think maybe you need that toughness from the coach? I, I agree with you. Um, the demeanour says that he's, he's soft. Um, but, but I can only assume and speculate. Mm. Because I think his softness is, is in front of the camera um, and how he conducts himself on the line. Mm -hmm. Mm. But, uh, but he, he, he commands discipline. Because if you just look at the response from the players, mm. if he comes to the touchline, a player will come immediately. Um, when he speaks mm -hmm. to the bench or his technical staff, there's response and there's respect in the response he gets. Mm -hmm. So I think that's maybe just his technique and his way of leadership because there's different ways of leadership. Um, so I hear you what I say. I, I, and to, to the extent that when I engage with him on the field, um, 
I don't speak football. I speak family. Because having traveled, I understand this man has left his, his family mm. behind, he's got children. The sacrifice he's made, um, it's, it's not only the football part, he's the human being. And, and because of his demeanor, it, it opens you up to say, I'm comfortable enough to chat, hey, how's the family? Are they coming to South Africa? Have they been here? Are you enjoying South Africa, you know? Mm. But it's because of that demeanor that you've experienced, that we experience, you're able to now enter into those conversations. And like we say, I think he's, he's a good human being. Definitely. Um, okay, the, quickly The interesting add. thing about this match is that uh, we've got two French guys coming up against each other. The Spanish, Spanish, guys. I mean, yeah. Spanish yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Pablo and... Uh, and yes. And, mm. and it make for such a, an interesting affair, I think. Yeah. Definitely. And, and Pablo obviously has the pedigree, he has the CV. Um, Rivero, I think this is his first main gig, mm -hmm. and that is why when he came to South Africa, there's always judgment. If you don't have a mm -hmm. CV, um, we're going to judge you, and they were calling him all sorts of names, and he's proved everybody wrong. Yeah. Um, for Franco, didn't come under the spotlight because of the CV, um, but also a, a coach that um, I think is a good human being. He's open. He he's open to the African culture. He's mm -hmm. open to understanding South African pl uh, players and cultures, and and that is when a foreigner, a foreign coach can stay here for longer. For sure. Mm -hmm. Because it, it is our, our, our culture of friendship and respect. And if you come with a different angle, mm -hmm. then we rebel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why Pablo Franco has been accepted as well. Is that what makes Amazulu a bit of a threat? I mean, it's, I've always felt for the last few years they've got a very good squad on paper. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can find the right coach for this Amazulu team, playing in Durban with their support base, if you get something good running there, mm. you can have Amazon actually having a, a bit of a, a factor in how things turn out in the league or in cup games. Do you think Amazon now are beginning to get that mix right, having found a coach that brings a bit of pedigree and respect? So the difficulty with that is that they had Benny McCarthy that ended yeah, very yeah, high yeah, up. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and when you do that in your first season, we expect you to maintain it and surpass it. Sure. Um, but if you look at the... Um, how they've recruited the players. Um, that'll let you know that um, that that season with Benny McCarthy, mm. um, you overachieved. Mm. You know, you're not supposed to be there right now. Mm. Um, the players that you're getting are players that's free, but quality players. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and yes. what you are saying now, Cesar, is that now you have the coach that can connect it because you need to start playing as a team. So the, the recruitment has, 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 has definitely improved, mm. but it's not where it should be because you want to now do the same thing that you've done with the Benny McCarthy. Mm. But I think mm. fans need to be a bit more patient. Uh, but I do think um, the three at the back uh, that Franco has um, instilled in the Amazulu side mm. makes them so difficult. Um, um, they've got the defense right, and that's how you build a team. And going forward, uh, they do have the individual qualities um, that can test any, any team on the day but it's just not consistent enough. Mm. Stiga, I mean, midfielder at some point in your life when you played, I'm interested, I mean, we always talk about Pirates and the middle park um, battle because we see a lot mm. of changes that happen there under Pirates. At some point, it will be Monare who will play against and Londo, it will be a Tim, now with mm. Makaula. So a lot of changes that we see there. From what you've seen in the past with the London Pirates and the changes that we see in the middle park, um, who has impressed you and what's your preference in terms of partnership when you're looking into that uh, midfield? Yeah. yeah, so much quality there, so much quality. But for me, the common denominator that makes Orlando Pirates tick uh, has to be Miguel Tim. Um, I played with him, so I understand him a little better mm -hmm. and I understand uh, what his strengths are. And um, I do a lot of Orlando Pirates games and when, when I do introspection of the combinations, like yeah. you say, mm -hmm. um, is it... Uh, um, Monare, is it Makaula, um, is it uh, Ndlondlo, mm -hmm. how does that, how does it work? So when Miguel Tim plays, his first touch is always open the body, the second touch is through the lines. Mm. Um, there's two touches and, 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 and that allows the team to attack mm. quicker. Mm. Mm. Whereas um, the other players would have two, three touches and sometimes go wide. Not saying that their attributes is not good enough. Yeah. They will bring something else, like a Makaula will bring something else. Mm. He'll bring the bite. Mm. And this is where maybe Tim needs to play a little bit forward if he's with Makaula. Mm. Monar is busy and sometimes um, tactically not disciplined. So you need a Tim that can think for him. So you won't see a Monari and a Ndlondlo together. You understand? So that, I think the coach is trying to do that, that, that balance correctly, especially mm -hmm. when you see what opponents you're going to be facing. Yeah. 
Well, while we're still on pirates, one of the key players for pirates is uh, Maswangani. Yeah. Um, you personally, you were a very skillful player, a ball player, yeah. somebody mm -hmm. who makes sense of a, a playmaker, if you, mm. if you like. Uh, he's that kind of guy. But there's one thing that I've always criticized him for um, is that maybe over elaboration, um, sometimes you just need to, you know, yeah. uh, the team needs to move quick. Mm. Uh, yeah. uh, and then he likes to elaborate and uh, a little yeah. bit of showboating. Yeah. What have you made of this guy? Um, I think, like, if you just take uh, from where he's come, mm -hmm. the struggles he's faced mm -hmm. in Portugal, I personally I know that. Um, for two, three years, you're not breaking through. People assume you're overseas and you're making bombs of money and you're, not, and you're, and you're getting mm -hmm. very little. And then you get an opportunity at Supersport and in one season, you're able to climb the ladder. And the next season, you are a fixture in Orlando Pirates. Mm -hmm. I think we have to commend him for that. Mm -hmm. However, um, the opportunity to grow is there and it must happen if he's going to take the next step, like you say. Mm -hmm. Because when you come into a big team like Orlando Pirates, Skies and Chiefs, Sundowns, um, and you receive a ball, and now you seem to be the player that must make things happen, and you feed off the crowd, now you feel you need to do a lot more. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that he's got his national team call up. Um, he, when you come up against opponents that play in Europe, you understand the less time you have on the ball, the more effective you are. Yeah. Yeah. And that's essentially what you're saying, yeah. Matlati. Yeah. And, and uh, I'm, I hope that he has the ability to take that next step. Um, I had the same discussion with the Super Ciso Vilakazi, General, Edwards. Mm. Very, very talented player. Mm. But we're spending too much time because you're Edwards, you need to do everything. Mm -hmm. Then Antonio Barades from Sundowns comes to Vitz. He doesn't want to play Villacazi, so I call him, I say, you need to change, you need to play quick. This coach wants you to play quick. You have to adapt. Mm -hmm. And when he adapted, player of the season, Sundowns mm -hmm. buys you in the national team. And we hope the same will happen for Masangani. I agree with you on mm -hmm. that one. Mm, and you mentioned Sundowns. We might as well go to Mamadi Sundowns, who are in action as well, um, on Friday against the University of Pretoria. I mean, Sundowns, we all know, of course, the fixtures that they've been, they've been having, jam-packed they just got back from Pretoria against play against of course Cape Town Spurs and mm. yes of course now the changes uh, they just played the CAF Champions League as well so the mm. rotation um, that coach Rulani speaks of that he's not too much of a fan of um, how do you see Mamla Distanda and coach Rulani Mukwena you know um, planning out against the University of Pretoria? Um, um, it's the Net Bank Cup so we expect upsets mm -hmm. and the only team outside of the PSL is um, mm -hmm. Ducks um, so if this fairy tale is going to happen, it's going to take a massive, a massive performance mm. from Tux. Um, I feel they're going to test Sundowns because if you've seen Tux play, um, I watched them against La Masia, I watched them against, um, was it Swallows? Yep. Mm. Very direct. Um, straight ball to the striker, play of the striker. That's going to be a different thing for, for Sundowns to, to adapt to. Uh, but make no mistake, Sundowns would uh, expect that. They would plan for that. Mm. Um, when they came up against La Masia, this is Sundowns. I went to go watch La Masia yeah. um, play a league match. And who was there? Wendell Robinson, Rolani Mukwena, his technical team, yeah. respecting every opponent they come up against. Yeah. Watched the last game, knows the starting lineup, done their homework, never took it for granted. Mm. So they will definitely know what to expect against yeah. us. Mm. And they will plan around that. Um, and it's a Sundowns that's not on form, but they still get the result against, uh, let's look at the last um, league encounter against Spurs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but by far not the best performance, but you travel away, um, it's not the best surface and you get the three points and you leave. So um, I don't see an upset as much as we know upsets exist in the net bank really? cup, it's going to be a big one. I'm just asking now, this, 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 I'm sorry about this, but this is tax. That's looking as though they might just make their way back to the top flight. Yeah. Um, for me, they add value, Tux, um, yeah. wherever they play, whether it's uh, varsity football, um, NFT, or in the PSL, where they've played in the PSL, mm. they add value. They've given us guys like Charlie in the past, Parker came yeah. through there, um, and they're so close to 
um, once again, getting back to the top flight, and with this net bank cup run, I'm getting that feeling that tax might they're just. They're always close, season just, Mabena, though. You know what I mean? Every season, they're always this close. Year, <laughs> this year, I'm, yeah. I'm serious. This year, it feels like they mean business. And um, in looking for that big upset, I'm not saying it's going to come in this game, uh -huh. but mm. if it was to come in this game, wow, what a game it would be. And it's a derby as well, yeah? Mm. And there's an um, a ex Sundowns player that will be wanting to to do one against his former employee, mm -hmm. which is Jules. Jules, yep. yeah. uh, what a player. But mm -hmm. he's adapting to that uh, team. And um, yeah, you never know. Um, I agree with you when you say Tux. Um, they bring something to yep. the PSL. Yep. Um, it's an institution. I come from an institution, Wits University, mm -hmm. which is known as Budwitz Wits. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it's, it's always a good thing if they're going to come through to the top level because there's structures there and it's opportunities for youngsters. Stika, Ila, only you talked about them playing direct. And there's something which is very interesting. It will bring a very for, for, for nice watching. Um, the direct man for them, who has been very critical for them mm. in the season, in the league this season, mm. is not eligible to play. Taban Sibanyoni. Mm. Sibanyoni, yeah. And then also yeah. their playmaker, Promish Mkuma, yeah. not, not eligible to play because they can't play against Zanos. Mm. Mm. Zanos mm. is a parent club. So, I mean, I don't know what the coach is going to do. Yeah, so there you have it. These two guys. They'll um, be crippled, man. They will be crippled. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, but I guess at the same time, that's where. Uh, you know, the coaching comes in now. That's yeah. where yeah. the coach needs to come up with something mm. different to offset mm. the challenges that... But, uh, uh, also, sure. before you sure. answer that, uh, consider this as well. For Sundowns being Sundowns, and we you know this is a huge Sundowns team where uh, you respect it all across the continent, not just mm. in South Africa. Should they still have that rule of if you loan new players uh, and you come <laughs> up against <laughs> us in the cup team, they can't play against us. This is the Sundowns. This is a lucky level of Sundowns, man. So you know what I mean? The, the, traits, <laughs> the traits of a, a person or a somebody in power. Yeah. Yeah, we must continue that, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be feeling you now. You must bite me. <laughs> and by the way, ah. I'm the reason why the players can't play is mostly if I give you a player and I continue paying for that. Yes, player, yes, then yeah. He can't then play yeah, yeah. Mm. Which, but if you take you him and then you salary, pay, yes, then he can yes. play. Yeah. Which makes sense yes. in the it business sense. Yes. yes. Yeah, but we're talking JS players now. We want to see people <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 as possible. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, no, you got to pay up. But mm. we move on then to another fi uh, fixture that I'm absolutely excited about. Um, we speak about institution. I think when you talk about Stellenbosch mm. and Super Sports United, those are mm. two institutions mm. in South African football. Why are you making that face, Zuma Bene? I think they're going something like 20 games unbeaten. Right now. Stelis. Stelis. Oh, Stelis, yeah. yeah. Like, wow, what a record. Yeah. Quietly getting on with business, yeah. 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 They Quietly. are. And, and it's that romantic story that we speak about mm. Coach Barker. So it's absolutely great. And we love Coach Gavin Hunt as well. But the thing with um, Stiga with Super Sport, it's that inconsistency that it, yeah. it just cripples them every season. Mm. It's just so sad. But it promises to be an exciting encounter between these two. What mm. kind of game should we anticipate between the two sides? Yeah, so Super Sport and Gavin Hunt. Gavin Hunt's a serial winner. He knows how to win. Um, but you mentioned the inconsistency now. Where that comes in is when you have a lot of youngsters mm -hmm. in your side. Yeah. Um, and um, you, he, he believes in experienced players. Um, and it's the second half of the season. Your 35-year-olds, eventually, this is where the fatigue sets in. Mm -hmm. um, so now you bring in your youngsters. But um, having said that, Supersport has assembled a formidable side. Yeah. When you have Krobla, you have a goal. Mm. Um, when you have uh, the likes of Machaman um, in the mid oh. middle of the park, in Glovo, yeah. when you have experience of Tlatsuayo, mm. you have the goalkeeper Goss, and that is a spine that says we can win anything. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, so it's going to be a massive test against, um, against Stelis. Yeah. Stelis beat them the last time. Mm. They, they, they competed in the cup, and uh, I think it's uh, the, the Black Label Cup. So. So Gavin Hunt will not forget that, and he's going to want to get one over them. Yeah. But uh, as you say, Mabens, um, Stelis just look unstoppable. They have, they have different dimensions of the way they play. Mm -hmm. At the Dani Craven, at the small stadium, there's a high press. When they play bigger, they can sit back and catch you on the counter. They have some quality there in the likes of Van Veik. Um, yeah, and uh, the Stellenbosch side proves to be very difficult. But I think that, I just feel that, Super Sport and Gavin Hunt wants to win something and they have a solid experience side that can do that.
Talk to us about the youngsters because that's the conversation that's going on mm -hmm. a lot, right? And you look into Steli's side with Titus and Adams. What have you mm -hmm. made of them? What's your opinion of these youngsters? Because mm -hmm. now there's that conversation as to who's better. Is it Omofu Gang yeah. from Pirates? Um, so there's yeah. that conversation there. Yeah, <laughs> what Chandra do you think of this? Campbell. <laughs> yes. Um, Titus. Yes, just so much quality and it's exciting. Yeah. Especially off the back of a good Nations Cup. Mm -hmm. And you can see what Bafana can do. I just feel that South Africa, and I'm, and I'm diverting a bit, I just feel that with our junior national teams, and yeah. uh, we're not casting the net wide enough. It mm -hmm. feels like if you're in a super sport academy, Pirates, Chiefs, um, Sundowns, you're in a national team. Mm. Where is your Nkipiteni Matombos from mm. Venda? Mm. Zunanim Gwigwis <laughs> from uh, um, Northern Cape. You, yeah. you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Um, so just to, not to divert, I'm excited again because we're unearthing talent and there's so much more out there. Mm. Uh, but coming back to the game, um, Chandra Campbell, quality there. Titus, I've seen Titus um, score five goals against Nottingham Forest in, um, is it Generation X Cup? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you win the MDC, so, um, oh, yeah. yes, they yes, went yeah. to play in mm -hmm. England, mm -hmm. they beat Leicester 5 0. They were like, no, Leicester's not good. In the finals, they beat Nottingham Forest 7, Titus scored five goals. Sure. And, you, and, and you're like, when, when are we going to see this boy? He came back from a tournament, boom, in the starting lineup. You know, so there's a conveyor belt of quality at that uh, Stellenbosch side. And you're just so excited to see who's going to be the next, the next best um, Dupree. Mm. As much as there's the talk about the youngsters in both these squads, how important is it um, when you look at the men that are leading them? Uh, Park on one side, Hunt on mm. one side. I think these are both coaches with a lot of respect in South African football that have been able to do a lot at times with... Um, not that much. Mm. When you look mm. at Barker, even at Tux, qualifying them for mm. the PSL back in the day, keeping them in the yeah. PSL for a while. What he's doing now with Studies um, and Hunt, well, his, his record yeah. speaks for itself. But what do you think of those guys and what they bring to these two clubs? Yeah, brilliant stuff from um, Gavin Hunt on the one end. Um, we know that he's got titles, he knows how to win titles. Mm. Mm. Um, he knows how to get the best out of his players. He keeps it simple, he keeps it direct. Um, and uh, defensively always strong, strong and set plays. Um, on the other end, for Stellenbosch, um, Stevie Barker, I played with Stevie Barker, I'm giving my age away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you keep on doing that. I played with Stevie Barker. I played with Stevie Barker. I was giving my age away. You give our age away. We're together. <laughs> <laughs> We're together in this. <laughs> yeah, man, so, so Stevie Barker, um, what a great human being. We've mm -hmm. got to start there. For sure. Like even um, with the media. I'm sure he, he, he's always too happy to, to give an interview. Mm. He's always happy to on the sideline. And I ask him um, of, of, of the youngsters coming up, of who's this, how good is he? And he told me, he says, this Jaden Adams plays just like you, Jaden Before he made the national team, mm. he says, this boy is a problem. He's a problem of the field, mm. but I'm going to fix him. You know, so you can see the human element is there. Mm. But more importantly, the talent identification. Mm. Mm. And more importantly, how he lets them evolve, like uh, the Van Royens that's become a captain mm. at a young age and yeah. is now a, a fully fledged captain. I think Kosin Kaba in, this, in, in the center of defense, even, if, even though he doesn't command a, a regular starting berth, whenever he comes in, he's ready. You look at Van, Antonio van Wijk emerging. Mm -hmm. So obviously, and it's not only Stevie Barker, it's a, it's a technical team around him that assists him. Um, so he's just done brilliant with, um, like you say, few resources. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stiga, there's one thing quickly, uh, a lot of people don't know about uh, Coach Gavin. When he stopped playing, he, he started coaching at the South African Air Force. In Stevie, Pretoria. yes. That's where I started yes. him coaching there. From there, oh, yes. he went to University of Pretoria, yes. And he'll sure. tell you, I was Air a Force. national team yeah. player. He played for the national team. The Air Force had a national team and then yeah. he coached yeah, them. Yeah, a friend of mine played for the Air Force the national team. <laughs> and he coached <laughs> them. <laughs> coached them. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay, so let's quickly move on to the last encounter that we have, that being Tears Galaxy and Cheaper United. Cheaper also um, really in a good form currently with Tabo September going down to uh, PE and they seem to, to be working well uh, with Coach Tabo. They talk to us about this encounter. I mean, with TS Galaxy as well, they're feeling really positive um, with Sia Gramovich. So this is an mm. exciting encounter in terms of both sides seemingly are in good spots of form. Yeah, probably the most equally balanced um, uh, mm. game of this, of this round. 
um, for two reasons. I think um, Chippa United, uh, they, he managed to get two good coaches there. Mm -hmm. Scholars of the game, students of the game, Kopo, Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, yes. as well uh, in the technical yeah. team. Yeah. Um, and it's a Chippa United that have quality as well. Mm -hmm. They've got some great individuals there. Um, they're off the back of a confidence building 2-0 uh, win against Kaiser Chiefs. Mm. So they'll be quiet to throw that in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I asked you about. We're saving that bit for a bit later. later. <laughs> so <laughs> they'll be oozing <laughs> with Kaiser <laughs> Chiefs. <laughs> well, he added, added in the, the instant effect as well. So it's just they've moved there I be and the numbers they're getting there. It's exactly. Just, it's, it's rubbing off and everything They might just not play when it's raining there. Yeah, and they'll be coming up against um, Siad Ramovic, which is so passionate, um, mm. he's meticulous. Um, the coach, uh, you know, you, you, you often judge a coach with the players that he have, but you have to see how he's improved the players. Mm. Whilst he was there, they True. sold mm. quite a bit. Um, speaking of Tobin Vala, Obas and company, um, you look at Naum Velase, has, he's converted him from a fullback to a central midfielder. Mm. And he's just blossoming in that position. So you see that, those are the traits that you say, no man, this coach, he, he really understands it. And what done it for me is that when he just started and he tried to speak our, the Vanek, San, Sunny Bonani, yes. not San Bonani, Sunny Bonani. Mm -hmm. And you just, you just take to him. <laughs> and you take him because you understand. <laughs> once again, no, once again, oh, the, human being, <laughs> no, the human being has attempted to understand yeah. where he's at. When in Rome, do as the Romans. Oh, and for sure. sure. Now that's the one yeah, side. Mm. Yeah. That's the one side, the human mm. being. But then uh, the coach himself, uh, uh, a master tactician, um, he's converted just before Bernard Parker got injured yes. to a midfielder where he was thriving, you know. So, um, yeah, this is what a, what a matchup. He is Galaxy. He's at home, yeah? He is Galaxy at yeah, home. Yeah, it's at mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. One thing I like about the said Ramovic is that he speaks his mind. Yeah. For the longest time, we've heard guys here who are He likes the drama, by the way, yeah. Stiga. Yeah. That's yeah. why he likes it. As much as he speaks his mind, yeah. I like how he fights for his players. Yeah. Even, yeah. Yes, we can talk about a lot about what was said between him and Rulani, but if you listen to his argument, he's fighting for his players yeah. and respect for his that players. That they must be respected. Which I was like, wow, this guy's winning over his mm. change room. Yeah. This is yeah. the fight he's having. Mm. Yeah, um, so are you saying semi-finals, DS Galaxy, Sunday? <laughs> is that what you want? That would be nice. I'm just nice. joking. <laughs> and also still talking about this match. Um, I've known Kwan Lokopo now for a while, and I arrived at Super Sport all those years ago, and, uh, mm. you know, he, he was a little bit of a, you know, overzealous over, over mm. yes. uh, uh, at times. I yes. remember, I always tell about the first story when he was the assistant coach of Pito. Mm. Um, when Pito standing up and say, ah, mm. then Kuala Loko Pool say, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? And you know what? But because it goes on the way he is, you know? Pito will respect that. Yeah. Yeah. Because he knows he comes from that. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and I think the, the fact that uh, he worked alongside Pito even in the development at Supersport, mm. when Pito was at Supersport, um, he would have he would have become a student of the game. He would have learned from the best, Pizzo Mosemani. Mm. Um, and um, now, given the opportunity, uh, I think it's just a platform for him to, to show what he can do. He worked with Coach Pizzo, he worked with Coach Kevin Hans, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so all yeah. that experience. That's a long time as well. Yeah. And also, he went through <laughs> the KBNV uh, Dutch uh, Correct. School of Coaching. That's where Correct. he was educated. Mm. Correct. So he's, he comes from that, uh, that, yeah. uh, that, that school. And, you know, it's good for him. He's got a maturity now and for sure. let's see what he can do. Yeah. What you love yeah. about these, uh, these games is not only is it great fixtures, for me, every, every game yeah, is no, a no, great fixture, yeah, but top, also top, top there's so much to talk about, not only just about the players, the playing styles, but the coaches, the characters too. Yeah. Yeah. There's yes. so much to say about them and their contribution to the game. Yeah, yeah 100%. Um, Tabo September, I think he's mm. the voice mm. behind it, but I'm mm. sure they work. Um, as a unit, For um, sure. having had that experience um, at Supersport to have worked together as well. So that always assists mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. where you can bounce off and you can trust each other. So I think that's a nice nice one that uh, Chippa's got going there. And we hope that uh, they stay there for 
Um, longer than usual. Mm. <laughs> I hope, I hope <laughs> than usual. Man. I hope she's more than other predictions because these games are too tight. All of them. No, yeah. All of them. Yeah. No, no. All of them. So you want to prediction for is the tax game. You know, tax and tax. Yes. <laughs> you, you, you already told us what he thinks is going to happen. <laughs> but, but to take them out of their misery, Stiga, quickly, I guess mm. you can go through the predictions for us before we move on, of course, to what else we need to talk about. You can start with Mamladi Sundowns and Tax. Ish guys, I'm going to now. Ish, yeah. Can't we start Sunday? <laughs> Let's start Sunday. <laughs> Let me think about that one. Friday, Stiga. <laughs> okay, no Friday. Like okay, um, yeah. everything we said and done. Mm -hmm. Ish, Sundowns are gonna hurt ducks. I how how many goals them. are you predicting here, Stig? Nah, it it'll be two no. It'll hurt. Two no. It'll hurt, it'll hurt them, but they'll uh -huh. they'll they'll. Dominate. They'll manage the game. Mm -hmm. um, they'll dominate possession, and uh, they'll they'll unlock that defense. And yeah, I think it's it's a big ask for Ducks. All right, Stellies and Super Sport. I think Super Sport are going to win this one. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it could be a, a draw, 90 minutes. It could go all the way to penalties. I think um, Super Sport will win this one. Okay, your former club. And just uh, remember my predictions. Take a bet. That's what I'm planning yeah. to do. I'm yeah. planning to watch this and quickly go and do my betting. <laughs> We've got a problem now. <laughs> um, yeah. Orlando Pirates and Amazulu. Orlando Pirates, Amazulu. Yo, sticky one. Um, very close encounter. Orlando Pirates to win by a single goal. Okay. And then the last one, TS Galaxy and Chippa United. TS Galaxy, because they're playing at home. Mm -hmm. Okay. And not in East London. Mm. TS Galaxy will take that one. All right, so we do know that as well. You're busy with content creation, um, with some of the things that you do outside, yeah. of course, your life of football. The NetBank House is also hosting, of course, a fan experience this week. And talk yeah. to us about that. Yeah, I think that's a special, brilliant, what NetBank has uh, come up with, uh, the Yarona House, mm -hmm. um, an opportunity for fans um, to sit with uh, legends <coughs> like um, Simpiwe Shavalala, Teku Medise, um, and myself and his other influencers and as they well. They love eh? their midfielders, don't they? Uh, they love them, but the quality, you can't blame them. We didn't click a new mind, I mean, <laughs> No, guys, okay. Yeah, okay, guys, you are there. I got some pool, I got some pool with Ned. Yeah, I think it's just awesome for, for us as well to sit with a fan and mm. then there's a different perspective, there's different mm. uh, enthusiasm, there's a different uh, shouting, that's going on so um, working in, as a broadcaster now you look at you look at the game differently you don't yeah. watch the game for yeah. sure it's an opportunity to just relax and then have fun as well mm. it's just brilliant brilliant initiative it definitely is and the other thing that NetBank stands for Stiga is the importance of course that footballers must still be able to live after football so that financial um, mm. education is quite vital I mean when you look into your life Stiga when, when did you realise that you, you know you need to manage your finances a bit better yeah. so that you know you make it a bit personal as well for someone who might be watching and the current yeah. footballers? You know, to be honest, um, I started realizing uh, a little bit too late, right? Mm -hmm. um, and they asked me, what, what advice would you give to, to youngsters coming up? I say, the minute you earn your first salary, you've got to start saving, no matter how much you're earning your first paycheck. My first paycheck is 1,800 at Shucks. Dutch University. Okay. So you wait till you earn more and you say, yeah, I was, mm -hmm. never, I was always conservative with my money. I was never flashy. I never, w not, not wasteful at all. Mm. But if you're not saving, what are you doing? Mm. You know, mm. if you're not investing smartly, mm. what are you doing? And to be honest, there's not a lot of products out there that offer this. Mm. And the fact that the likes of NetBank can come and say, listen, let's work smarter. Let's see what it is because I don't want to take out the RA mm. and it only matures when I'm 65 because I'm going to retire mm. 30 to 35. Yeah. yeah. So you now what is that RA doing for me? Mm. You know, so you got to make smart decisions. Um, it, people say invest in, in property. You got to know where to buy For sure. so, uh, in the right areas. Mm. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of dynamics for that. But if it's something that I could have done better and I'm still learning because I've entered into the business side of things and I'm learning constantly yeah. how to work better with your money. Um, but I started a little bit too late when you're 28, 29, you're like, Ish, I need to start saving. It's never too late. Mm -hmm. But if I can give advice, when you get your first paycheck, this is when you need to, and live within your means, have an understanding that if my career spans for 10 to 15 years, 15 years if you're lucky, for sure. that is going to be my, my money that I'm going to 
will that sustain me there? So how can I live there and then come back down? If I'm able to adjust my lifestyle, then do so. Mm -hmm. But understand that you're going to have a peak in your earnings and understand that it's going to come down, you know? Yeah. Um, so when you're at the height of your earnings, make those investments and stay within your means. Like if they say anybody, you, me, everybody, mm -hmm. the more you earn, the more you spend. True. Mm -hmm. True. So what football does to South Africans, South African players is that it just changes your lifestyle. You can now afford a bond, you can afford a car, mm -hmm. you buy clothes, you can eat out in a restaurant. When are you saving? Maybe you can't buy that house. Yeah. Maybe you can't buy that car, you know? So that, that's what I, I can share with the guys there. And another thing I think we never really take into consideration, we look at you, you say 15 years if you're lucky. But yeah. that's 15 years of the top flight, which is very lucky. Mm -hmm. uh, some guys have to share that experience with playing maybe in the first division where yes. the money and the finances are nowhere close to yes. the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you are just different in that you got to play top flight for a long time. Some yeah. guys, seven years, NFT, five years, PSL, and you have yeah, to Yeah, have to, you have to make sound decisions. Mm. Um, um, and Matlatse, like, let's say you, you, you sign for, for one of the big teams. And now you're earning, let's say, four or five million per annum. That gets stuck, taxed. Now you can afford, if you go to the bank, they'll give you that bond yeah. of mm -hmm. five bar. Mm -hmm. But you have a contract for three years. For three years, yeah. You're not mm -hmm. be so, you know, uh, and that bond is 20 years. Yeah. Now, you, maybe you can't afford five bar, my friend. Maybe take 1.5, work with your sign on fee, close it. You know, so, so those mm -hmm. things, when I get an opportunity, I share it if the boys want to listen or not. Because sometimes when you come there and they're like, ah, this is, this is a Madala, what does he know? He had his time. They, they're not susceptible to Do they think you're a Madala? Advice. I am a Madala. You don't look like a Madala. <laughs> ah, on, this, on the pitch, <laughs> ah, man, I say, ah, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's that's the yeah, situation. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I mean, most mm. of our guys, if you like, you can have one good contract. Yes. Mm. In a South African context, if you earn hundred thousand for three years, that's it. Yes. From there, you are in 30, 40. Mm. Mm. Yes, and, and yes. go go into it understanding yeah, that. Sure. And you know what? I always say, especially, especially. Um, and I share this as often as I can with, with who is open to, to taking advice, is that when you move to Chiefs, Pirates or Sundowns, because you all want to play for that team. Mm. Like it, it, when, you, when you're a youngster, you want to play for that team. And Bafana, Bafana, I'll put it in there. But you have to remember, when you go to Chiefs or Pirates or Sundowns, if you are not successful there, you have one more move. Mm. One more move. There's a few of them, David Matubula, that can resurrect again mm -hmm. and come yeah. back. Mm -hmm. But we can count it on Mawane. So, uh, so when you go there, my friend, make it work. Because sure. when you get the big money, you've got to pr uh, pr um, uh, produce the goods mm -hmm. so that you can sign the second one, the extension, yeah. mm -hmm. if you don't go overseas. Mm -hmm. You've got to stay there like a Shaba. You've got to stay there like a Teko. You've got to stay there cool. forever, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, mm -hmm. if you don't go overseas. So understand, it's easy to get there. The question is, can, can you stay? stay? Oh, buzz, Diga, drop yeah. mic at that point. <laughs> 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 but we move over, Stiga. Earlier on, we were talking about Stellies and Super Sports United. You spoke about the youngsters. And I remember last year um, when you were talking about Kaiser Chiefs and looking into, of course, the youngsters there, you mentioned Jabu Bule, who yeah. I found interesting that uh, when you said that when he was at Kaiser Chiefs, that he had the support around them, right? He was mm. playing amongst the best. When you look at Kaiser Chiefs now, the youngsters are there. But then there's the call to say, put on the youngsters. But then now the quality around them. Mm. Do you think that because this was 2023 where you're saying, nope, this quality, this is not it. 2024, here we are. And Kaiser Chiefs fans are still crying. Mm. When you look into what they're getting wrong, is it still the signings? Is it still the players around these youngsters? Now, I'm honored that you remember what I said. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I, I say it so often. Yeah. You know, like when Jabu Pule, and I don't call him Mashlangu, he's going to fight with me. I call him Jabu Pule. I, me, I played with Jabu Pule. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The real stuff. I played the with Pule. Yeah. And I put the dots on his hair, by mm. the way. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. In the yeah, I was busy there by rock siding. Anyway. Oh, you're the plug. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, when Jabu, <laughs> Photocom Cup, I'll never forget, when he played mm. for Dollars Are with him with Jabu supplemented Italian what was words. already there. Yes. Mm. Tiki Tiki and company. Yeah. Mm. 
Now you expecting Mdudu's uh, Shabalala Tuba mm. to save the team? No, the youngsters must come and supplement. They must be on Mabena at sundowns. Yeah. You must come and supplement and and have the freedom and cause havoc and eliminate defenders and grow gradually. You can't come there and take it on the shoulder. Mm. Keegan Dolly and company needs to take that job. Mm. The experienced players must take that job. The Kunes. Um, who else is there? Uh, is is Mart experience? The Marts. Mm. Mm. They need to bear that cross, carry that cross, yeah. and the youngsters must come and add value. So that, yeah. for me, that's that's what must happen, and you can't put all that pressure on the youngsters. Well, mm. we were saying, um, and this is the difference maybe between, uh, let's say, Chiefs now and Chiefs uh, 15, 20 years ago, uh, and beyond that. Um, in that, but now we're just counting uh, for a youngster coming in. You've got counted Kune. Um, Tali and Martin. Yeah. Mm. And then when you think of Chiefs back in the day, you'd have Dr. in one squad, you'd have uh, yeah. uh, Kuse in one same squad, yeah. um, you had maybe Prime Belo in that squad as well. Yeah. You had so many players yeah. in one squad that were carrying that team. That were, all of them were bonafide stars. Yeah. And as a young Sheikh's Kung, when you're coming in there, yeah. you're leaning on all these guys. Mm. Correct. Right? Um, Correct. And right yeah. now they've got about two or three that we can count off the top of our head, which is yeah. so different in the culture of teams between then sure. and now. So there you have it. Uh, the, um, the leadership roles at Kaiser Chiefs, there needs to be m much more players that have have played for Chiefs for four or five years. And one. Mm. The Kune and one, um, and they must nurture the rest. We have sat here week in, week out, try to <laughs> analyze <the> Chiefs. <laughs> mm. I've come to a conclusion that Chiefs are like uh, a car that has been in, in an accident. Yes. <laughs> They're just waiting for an assessor to ride it off. But at the current moment, at the current form that mm. they are, I can tell you right now, there, there is no hope there. Um, I don't, you know, if, if they continue it that way they are mm. now, I don't think they will even make it because, um, you know, you watch them play, there's no drive, there's no hunger, there's no motivation, mm. there's no quality. Um, it's just guys who are just going through emotions. And, and, and I, I say this is it, profoundly sad that yeah. mm. a team of this magnitude is going through this thing. And also, if you look at the top, they also don't seem to have a plan as to how are they going to salvage the situation. Because the you just can't mm. go on like this. You can't. Mm. Mm. Um, just quickly, on, on what you're saying, on your point. Um, for me, when I look at Kaiser Chiefs, and this, uh, I'd love to get your thoughts on this as well, Matthias yeah. and, and Chloe. Um, what's telling for me is Chiefs of old, um, Kaiser very much involved mm. in the culture, in what Chiefs was, the glamour boys. He came back, he changed football, he changed fashion, he changed the culture and so much and contributed. And Chiefs were that. They, they contributed to so much more than just football. Um, they were the it boys of South African football, mm. style and, and everything else. And that came from Kaiser. The older he's getting, the less influence he's having in the club. Um, and I think with the less he's contributing and having a say is the more the struggles are coming in uh, on top of just the playing field. And I'm talking culture now, Kaiser Chiefs. It's not the same. And for me, the older Kaiser gets and the less he's involved, it seems to be affecting the team as well. I don't know if you guys see it that way. First, they must get a coach. Culture, I'm talking... And Coach, yeah, culture. Yeah, 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 well, culture, I mean, culture is, the culture will come back mm. when the team start picking up a bit. It's the same thing with Bafana. Uh, people are, 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 are beginning to love Bafana again because of uh, the improved fortunes mm. of the last while, you know, up yes. on and yes. you know, Coach Hugo Bruce seems yeah. to, to be galvanizing the team. Yes. And people mm. are, you know, you'll see if they continue at this rate, mm. You know, Bafana will be, will be back. Will be the same yeah. Bafana of old. Chiefs, um, you know, the history is there and all that kind of stuff. Mm. But uh, for now, uh, you know, get a coach. Uh, maybe give him three years. Give him time to to fix the, the, this mess that is there. Uh, also, they really have to take a consultation as to, I don't know where they are going to find the money and buy the right players. I've always said it also here that over the last while, I think only Dolly, Kamabiliad, Castillo, are really the players for me who really qualify to play for this. That's mm. all the players. I would never, if, I, I, was, if, of if I was in charge of signing players, yeah. I would never have signed all the rest of the players there. Mm. Because they are just mm. not good enough to play for Chiefs. And the results are showing, you know. 
uh, get the coach, get the players, get this thing working again. Otherwise, it's just going to be, you know, the same old story again. You know, and 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 if mm. you really want to catch up with Sundowns, who are so strong, who have got structures in place, mm. you can't catch Sundowns uh, uh, doing this. Even the same as Paris. Mm. Mm. Paris in the league, they're just also as hopeless as Chiefs because they are never going to be able to catch up with Sundowns. Mm. And just, those are just the facts and the numbers mm. that are there. We are not making them up. For sure. And I mean, Stiga, for you to come into that, I know scouting is also something that's very important for you because mm -hmm. when you talk about how you were scouted, especially in the national team, when you bring it back then to Kaiser Chiefs, I mean, the importance of, of getting the right players and identifying as to what kind of players do we need for Kaiser Chiefs. Talk to us about that scouting. It's, it's, it's probably the most important thing. So if you look at the structures in Europe, they have a sporting director and he's in charge of recruitment. Mm -hmm. Now in his recruitment department, it's four, five, six scouts that have to be um, given a manual, a mandate. This is the type of player we're looking for. Mm -hmm. I was a scout at Bisbet Wits. Mm -hmm. um, there was a coach at the time. The players I liked is not his type of players. I said, thank you very much for the opportunity. It's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so I recruit Pagaman uh, Mtlambi and then he's not your player. You understand? Yeah. So that there needs to be cohesion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't go there. Um, for a paycheck and, and uh, to eat. You, mm -hmm. you need to be effective. So for me, going back to Chiefs, the recruitment department needs to get together. Yeah. So as you're saying, as you're saying, maybe the quality is not there. Stika, during AFCON, Rulani, where, where was Rulani? He was in Brazil. Yes. Mm -hmm. You didn't go there to uh, enjoy uh, uh, mojitos and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, nogaladas on the yeah. Copacabana beach. Was making the deals, and it never coaches. happened. It never happened yesterday, my mm. Networks never happened yesterday. Can I can I add yes. to what you're saying? Um, five, four years ago, one of the technical team, Rolani, was still part of it. Wendell Robinson, um, I was talking to him. I said, um, my ex teammate is a coach in Argentina. So if you need references on players that's bringing, just tap into that. They send me three, four profiles. I send it to him. This is now before you really go there mm. and see. Mm. Like th there was a network because I understood what type of player they wanted. Uh, the same coach is now the coach of uh, Boca Juniors. Sure. And also the reference is, is solid. Mm. So I'm saying is that the recruitment at Sundown is at such level. Mm. And then if you want success, Pirates, Chiefs, whoever it is, the recruit, it starts with the recruitment. Who are we bringing? Bobby Matong signed me. Bobby signed Nengo Masha. Mm. The, whatever Bobby was doing back then, he knew what he wanted. Mm. How, so, often, how often mm. you will be at the airport sometimes, uh, let's say for an early flight, 8 o'clock flight, that you see three, four, maybe five Sundowns guys in tracksuits that you don't know, mm. but clearly these guys are backroom staffers. Mm. Yeah. And then you talk to them, you say, hey, what's your story? What's mm. the, no, no, no. I'm going to another 12 tournament in yeah. Dumalanga at the 12. Yeah. There's one player I heard about there I want to go check out. Mm. Mm. So um, another one's going to Northern Cape. There's another yeah. 16 tournament. He's heard about one player. He's going to go watch this whole tournament for one player that they're scouting that they're trying to get to sundown. For sure. So they, that, mm. and that was what, five, six, seven years ago? Yeah. So, so they've been at it. Comes for a while. back to the point I was making like, when Rulano was in Brazil, these ones, what were they doing? <laughs> <laughs> what were they doing? <laughs> you should ask them. <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? That's trouble. No, yes. you are, it's the truth, mm. unfortunately. Yeah. Mm. And I can tell you now. Um, if something proper comes out of the teams that Rulani has been to, maybe they can't get him to Europe, they'll bring me. Yeah. They'll, you know, they'll bring very, very good players here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, and and, and you are, if, if you are there, those are, those are the things you need to do. Another good example to uh, uh, illustrate how the level at which are playing. Look at the situation they did now with their players with Ed Bafana um, mm -hmm. in Algeria. Straight, mm -hmm. private flight mm -hmm. to, 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 uh, Tanzania. to Tanzania. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have to act big and you have to mm. behave big. You can't talk, uh, talk about what happened mm. uh, in, in 1980. And, and in many and aspects, in many aspects, Kaiser Chiefs led the way. Kaiser Chiefs started mm. with a village. Mm. Um, you know, when, when, when I left Kaiser Chiefs and I come yes. back 12 years ago, I don't see the same village. It mm. has evolved mm. tremendously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of management, in terms of what the players get. So there's a basis to work from where other teams don't have that basis. Mm -hmm. So so it's it's more attainable for Kaiser Chiefs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
than it would be for land of Pyrus right now. Mm. Sure. Do you, you understand what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So there's, there's, yeah. there's, there's a precinct. Uh, but having said that, I believe if there's any team that can catch sundowns, the first team you look at is Orlando Pirates. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, there's a, a conversation we've had in recent times about, well, first, first it was foreign goalkeepers um, coming into the uh, league and their contribution and so on, um, as opposed to um, maybe taking places of younger South African keepers. But I want to talk to you about your experience in Russia and so on. Yeah. Um, as the foreigner there, yeah. playing and trying to impress as the foreigner yeah. and what it's like when you're playing overseas as the foreigner is trying to earn the first team place on a regular. Yeah. Work harder, more yeah. pressure? Is yeah, so like? first and foremost, um, if you're a foreigner in a country, you have to be better than what they have. Sure. You must, what are you bringing? You have to be better than the locals. That is why we are acquiring your services. And that is not the situation in South Africa mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Because I can tell you what, when, when there's a foreigner, just before I played and when I was playing, my friend, you know this guy's quality. You know Chance mm -hmm. Gondwe's quality. Mm -hmm. You know Roger Fetumba's quality. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. You know Tenash Nengomasha when he comes, okay, he's going to give Patrick Mbutu a run for his money. Mm -hmm. So th if you were a foreigner, you have to be better because you're coming to take somebody's job. Now, my experience when I first went over for a trial in Switzerland, I'll never forget so I'm good in small spaces, mistake, they had a game, 7v7 seven seven small space, I came one, two, through the legs, mm. okay, next one, I tried to do it, he took me out, no, defended, oh. he, yeah, he killed me, and then, I was like, oh, okay, fine, carried on, now this is where you must now show your grit and your, mm. your can, can you, are you going to hide away, what, I carried on, I also gave him one, um, <laughs> in, in, in the dressing room, not everybody's your friend, for sure. You're coming to take somebody's position. Mm. Nobody's speaking to you. That same guy that kicked me was one of the only guys that could speak English. But I found that out maybe five months later. Wow. You know? Mm -hmm. The others is broken here, broken there. But because you're coming into a space where you need to prove yourself that you are better and you deserve to be wearing that jersey. For sure. And that is what I found of being a foreigner in a foreign country. Mm. So now when I'm at home, and you're a foreigner, you have to be better than, than, than what we have, my friend. And that is not the case right now. So Bombus tells me that, uh, you remember Oscar Fulon? Yes. He was at Sundowns mm. and uh, he trialed some South American player mm. for Telcom, uh, spectacular. Mm. Yeah. He says he refused to play with that guy, and that guy was a player. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, no, no, I'm not playing. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's exactly. <laughs> that, 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 that must be the mentality. Yeah. I'm not saying being ugly. To, to a foreign guy, because I'm the first guy when there's a foreigner, I go to my greet him because I was in that situation. For sure. So we are not on the field, off the field. Hey, my friend, I must accommodate you. The late Papi Fati. Mm. Mm. Fluent in English. Came to Bad Vizvets. I see the quality. My friend, are you okay? You find apartment, you have car. Uh, how are you getting around? You have supermarket. Mm. Because I knew the challenges I mm. went through. Mm. Now I see the quality. I'm like, I got to help this guy. Okay. This yes. guy is going to add value. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Uh, sure. If you are not good, my friend. No, uh, no, my we friend. don't have time I for am. you. <laughs> so Stiga, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> hold on. <okay. laughs> oh my goodness, you, you want to go through all time every plane right now. <laughs> so Stiga, I mean, you played during a time where um, we're exporting a lot of players, right? Yeah. So now it's, it's a bit different for South Africa. We're not exporting a lot of players. What mm. do you think that does for us and the quality that we're producing in the country? Yeah, so um, the, I always say, like, I was, I was so fortunate to, to be in a, in a national team when I'm rubbing shoulders with... Um, my first camp was in Switzerland when I was at Grasshoppers. Mm. Um, Phil Masinga walks in with Aye. a velvet Versace suit. Sure. Oh. For, now I'm in the hotel for you. Velvet, Baba. Eiffel was a dress. Yeah. Goodness. Eiffel was a dress. <laughs> Eiffel was a dress. <laughs> Pia Issa. Yeah. Quentin Fortune. Uh, Alfred Piri was still in Turkey. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Mm. Ah, guys. Yeah. Uh, Sean Bartlett is there. Mark Fish is there. Uh, I'm getting goosebumps. There's big players there. For sure. There's big, big players. Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm like, when you go to training, the questions you ask yourself in that bus, am I good enough to be in this? Mm. In this mm. team? Today we're going to see the truth will set itself. Mm. Mm. You will answer all these questions you had as a young boy. Mm. Yeah. Today at training, I'm totally switched on. Yeah. I'm now I'm in Europe now. I can't play 
guys that she's football where I was. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I must yeah. be effective. Carlos Quiroz is the coach. Huh? Mm. Yes, yeah, different now. I, my friend, I had to stand up. Ah. And then when you see, okay, first day, second day, third day, okay, 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 I'm here now. You know, mm. that is when you, now that is the opportunity you have when everybody is based overseas. Teko Medice will tell you, when I come there, Benny McCarthy is there, boss. Mm. We want to get a chance to speak to him, to understand mm. his mentality, mm. to see how he trains. Mm. Because like it or not, we love our continent, but football is played in Europe, yeah. Mm-hmm. And we need to attain to play there, mm-hmm. you know. So when players are abroad and you come and you rub shoulders with them, you your hunger to to play at that is why I didn't extend my contract at Chiefs. Sure. And it wasn't because I never loved Chiefs. I mm-hmm. love them till today. It wasn't because I didn't. I had a taste, and I wanted to go mm-hmm. and play at the highest level, you know. And that's what it does. We need players to go abroad. Mm-hmm as soon as they can. And you don't necessarily have to start at a big team. You won't start at a big team because we are from South Africa. Mm. You have to negate your way through like a Percy Tau did. Yeah, yeah that's what Nasif Mouris told us the other day. Leave Santos, go to Cyprus, small mm. team, mm. push, 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 push. The next thing, mm. Panathinaikos, push. The next thing, Came Champions over. League, Came uh, over. Spain. Came over and we are like this because the team that he initially went to, um, we assume it's a small team. Aris Thessaloniki is a m- massive history, massive mm. team. Lavas Motlala, Sam Magalife all went mm. there. They never stayed there. But like your first step, don't be afraid to take it. Like yeah. jump, jump at it. Yeah, but these guys are happy to be at Sundowns and go to the Tendiza Park. Or go to the uh, go to that, uh, yeah, yeah. South Gate Mall there. I don't think South Gate is North Africa now. I don't think it's called Tendiza. I mean, yeah, but I hope it would have changed because that's no, what no, we, no, had no, no, we had to do because we never had a village like it is where I can stay, I can eat, I can go to gym, I can get recuperation from four physios. We had to walk at Southgate Mall. Sure. Like, use that. At the clubs now, some, if you are lucky, this breakfast, this lunch. Yeah, yeah. But look at the madness of these guys. Mm. Some of them will leave all these things and go and eat pap and chest chanyama there. To be seen. Yeah. Leave the nice stuff, the, 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 the chicken and the the pasta. Really. And, that helps yeah. you actually. It's not yeah, uh, just fancy. You have to eat like that to be able to be able <laughs> yeah, to Yeah, Mush- Mushin <laughs> always said, if I had it my way, we would always camp yes. after a game, yes. uh, not before yeah. the game. Yeah. Because the next 24 hours becomes the most important. Yeah, but the, also that one's got a problem. Because they'll all come drunk now. You have a problem. When we're planning for, for having you here, um, about your generation of players as well. Um, yeah. You came out in a crazy generation, your young yeah. guys, the guys you yeah. came out with, which I'm cool, uh, or Petit Mbutu, you mentioned them a little oh, bit Steve earlier. Le Bollea. Um, Steve Le Bollea, oh, yeah. Junaid Hartley, the yeah. crazy, crazy, Quinton for yeah. crazy generation. Like, the talent there was enormous. Yeah. But you also had a few bad boys in that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 like who? No, no you tell me, I don't know. <laughs> He was yeah, telling us, but last year, you know, I don't know. <laughs> so, so, yeah. um, what's it like when you have guys that are so crazy, well, so mm-hmm. good, that they're almost like mad scientists? Yeah, when, the, when you're a genius, you, you, know, you, you, genius, you, you, you yeah, don't, you yeah, cannot they be. Were there, they were that level. Can't be normal? You cannot no. be normal. <laughs> they were normal. I was the sane one. I was always the focused one. Really? Uh, yeah, I, don't, I, I'm, I was the focused one. So you know the mad ones. <laughs> <really bad. laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I must say that um, we were fortunate, um, and I don't like to speak about what we've done. And I want to be that guy. Mm. Mm-hmm. But but the current generation, like I'm, I'm excited when I see um, Ratomo, when I see Shandre Campbell, when I see um, you know, the boys coming up. I'm yeah. excited because I can identify the quality. Mm-hmm. Now we were fortunate enough because we got the platform. We were the generation that had the platform mm-hmm. that could play an under twenty World Cup where you're exposed to the world, Mm. where you could play the Olympics, where you have the opportunity to be scouted. Can you believe in this day and age? We don't have that now. Mm. Mm. Because Safa needs to get the house in order because they don't have money to let the boys Mm. play friendlies and go on camps. Mm. Sheikh Mashaba used to take us for three weeks, for six weeks to France and Germany, play against Norway, play against... We had that opportunity, so I'm understanding of how fortunate we are. And we took advantage of that. And that is why we found ourselves following the class of 96. Mm. 
Mm. You know, yeah. these boys don't have that. So you guys will go on mm. camps where it's not necessarily a competition, oh. just as an under preparation team going out there just. Okay. Yeah. Look, look. Yeah, yeah, we would, we would have, look, yeah, we would yeah. have camps <laughs> because <laughs> we would go to the Afcon. Yeah. You know the under uh, the under twenty Afcon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We went to the final. We lost in the final against Morocco. One nil. You're smiling because you remember it. Mm. This is where Benny McCarthy was mm. popped up by Ajax mm. Amsterdam. Yes. So we were given that platform. We were that good that we could go to the final. For sure. We were prepared. We were sent to Mauritius. We were sent to to Senegal. We were sent there. So we're going to come up against African oppositions. Mm -hmm. Let's prepare. Let's see how far we're off. What is our strategy? You yeah. know. So we were fortunate in that sense. Mm. Before, Jabu, Jabu, Jabu tells me a story now. There's no way she's going to be now. All your stories, no way. You want to think about all your stories today? No today, no way. No way, Caesar. Stigger, lastly, before we let you go. Um, I want to find out, I mean, you played under 20, right? Under 23. And currently, we have players who have never played for the junior structures, yeah. right? Mm. The importance of that, in your opinion. Massive, mm. massive. There's very few players um, that can step up when, you know, when you're standing and you're singing that national anthem. Like that is when you when you've arrived. Yeah. This is when you can tell yourself, I have arrived. Uh, I have fought. I have done whatever I needed to do to get here. Because that is for me the biggest honor a footballer could ever do. Is stand there, put your your hand on your heart, and sing the national anthem. Because mm -hmm. you're representing 50 million people. You have been chosen to be part of 11 guys in the starting lineup to represent your team. Mm -hmm. So. If you've done that at a junior level in a final, mm. when you do it for the national team, this is now when everybody's going to see you. No, you've done it before. You are ready. You are not intimidated by um, the Egyptians that are the most dirtiest players that, uh, uh, that, that they like. Mm. They'll, they'll, the ref is not looking. They'll spit you. They'll kick you. They'll put their fingers all over where we can't mention on TV. <laughs> <laughs> like you, 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 you have that experience. You yeah. come up against... Um, Denmark, where if you are not switched on in set plays, you'll, they'll score a goal every set play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so you've traveled through that. You are not intimidated. So the chances of you staying in that national team, mm. the odds are 98%, mm. you know? You got to not lose that before you lose. I just, I just want to <laughs> say something. <laughs> in my view, uh, that team of you guys that went to the Olympics in 2000. Say, that was yes. Brazil. That Bill Brazil. Yes. 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 In, yes. in. Yes. in my view, uh -huh. I don't think that South Africa will ever assemble a, good, a team as good as that one. I, 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 yeah. I, 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 I dare say it. Yeah. Yeah. That, team, saying, yeah. that team was very special. Yeah, it, yeah. We will mm. never ever assemble a team as good as that one. And that team came through the steps. Yeah. Uh, under, 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 under 20, as you said, mm -hmm. you guys went to Malaysia, mm -hmm. to the World mm -hmm. Cup, and you know, it was a good progression. Coach, uh, Coach Shakes, uh, Coach Kenny Lazi, Cyprian mm -hmm. Mahala Maiman, and all those people mm -hmm. were behind that team. Yes. And, uh, yes. you know, yeah. we, we, that was... That generation I'm telling you about. Yeah, no. Biggest, ah. that, biggest, was the, that was the cream. Biggest loss, biggest loss, because 98 France World Cup, um, we were too sentimental. We, we made, we made so much wrong decisions. Mm. Uh, since we, maybe we're not ready, mm. but you don't need to be ready. It's your first World Cup, no. my friend. Yeah. You need to make that transition. Yeah. And that is where we... Like that is where we started yeah. going. The, oh, there were three players from, from that team in the national team. Um, and they deserved to be there at the time. It was Benny McCarthy yeah. um, playing for Ajax, Quinton Fortune and Darren Barkley. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, we... We should have been there. There should have been another seven, eight players. Mm, there should have been seven, mm. eight players, part of that. Uh, and then you take it to the next level. And Clive Barker needed to stay there. But mm. having said that, not to divert, um, um, yeah, it was it was a it was a honor to play along alongside those players. Yeah, special. Mm. Definitely special. Stiger, clearly you're special. These gentlemen have been hunting you for a good two months now. I'm glad that you I finally joined us. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much for joining us. And of course, we'll see you again. Come the final, you've somehow predicted a semi-final between uh, Mamelodi Lady Sundowns and Tears Galaxy. So let's see how that one pans out. <laughs> Good luck. See you soon. <laughs> Super. That is, of course, then how we wrap up the Arena Sports Show. Cheers. Goodbye.